What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Special treat today. I have a new podcast with the one and only Jim McD. We call it 50% Facts. Each episode, we take one topic, one question, we dive in, and in the first part of that episode, me and Jim explore that question without doing any research. Second half of each episode, we bring in one of the world's leading experts to give us the facts, to give us the answers. And today, we got a little sample for it. If you guys like it, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, subscribe, check out 50% Facts on YouTube here at The Jim McD, and also on all platforms, iTunes, Spotify, anything you want, link in the bio, appreciate you, have a great day. Is this, you always see the, um, the caveat before starting any exercise or nutrition program, um, see your doctor, see your physician, whatever. If people do that, like, number one, where is that coming from? And number two, if they actually come and see you and say, hey, I want to start a program, then what what are you looking for? What kind of tests are you running? What are you expecting to see? And then what are you, what are you trying to improve? Yeah, it's a funny thing because I was actually thinking about this the other day about how, I mean, we live in, uh, you know, a Sue Happy or litigious or litigious whatever the, the word is uh world so everybody's trying to sue somebody and so companies are very careful about uh their wording uh you know when it comes to exercise programs and you know even on exercise equipment it says ask your doctor before starting any exercise plan right but like really the, the risk is extremely low you see these park you questionnaires when trainers get um, individuals and basically the, the the main thing is making sure somebody doesn't have uh, like an unstable cardiovascular disease where you know, they're going to drop dead in the middle, in the middle of, a, of a set the, the risk is extremely low though and i actually think that uh, i think that may and the thing may end up doing more harm than good when they when they say these types of things but it's just it's because you know, people don't want to get sued. I, I'm very careful too. I, I don't give, you know, recommendations out lightly. Uh, right. I have lots of disclaimers when I do training programs and things like that. But in, in the reality, the risk is is very low. So yeah, the the biggest thing is making sure somebody doesn't have uh, coronary artery disease that's unstable and not treated, or or even untreated, uh, extremely high blood pressure, and, and you know mm. you can get acute. You can get acute rises uh, in blood pressure when you do, you know, vigorous activity or, or weightlifting. Uh, just in that in that moment, um, there are other things like lung disease, uh, shortness of breath, things like shortness of breath, chest pain. Those are obvious, though. You should have seen your doctor. And so when people say, "Yeah, you better see your doctor before doing this," it's literally just to make sure they're not going to drop dead doing it. But in general, it's it's pretty low risk. Let's uh, maybe turn the question then just a hair. And when people are always talking about health markers, uh, there's a lot of you know keto uh, podcasts on the internet, uh, carnivore diet, paleo diet, this type of exercise, high intensity this, low intensity that, and everyone says, oh, I did it for six weeks and my health markers improved. What are these people bragging about that they actually don't know what they're talking about? Yeah, that what they're likely talking about or is if, if i had a patient that said that it would have to be blood pressure uh, blood sugar maybe even triglyceride levels because uh, uh, those are the ones the things that are easily or more readily improved with around you know even three to five percent of your of weight loss which is doable within six weeks so if they're talking about their health markers improving it's probably those. Uh, and are those, those pretty uh, substantial, in your opinion, uh, to actually gauge someone's health, perhaps? Because, um, I mean, obviously, life is weird. There's some medical things that no one knows about, and people die for crazy reasons. Uh, even maybe their health markers are good. But are those kind of the gold standard of what a human should be, maybe be looking at um, if they consider themselves a healthy individual? There's some of the major ones. That's why we screen for those things because they're um we want to pick up blood pressure issues uh early um it's you know they call it the silent killer because you can have higher blood pressure and not even know you right. know some people say they you know, feel like they have headaches or whatever from high blood pressure but 
you know, in general, people with running around with high blood pressure just don't even know. That's why we screen for it. And it is a market. I mean, you're at an elevated risk of, of cardiovascular disease and strokes with uh, high blood pressure. And blood sugar, uh, too, you know, obviously, if your blood sugar is elevated, it can put you at risk for type 2 diabetes. Obviously, if it's really elevated, you already have type 2 diabetes or uh, type 1, but that's an autoimmune disease. But um uh, and, and then triglycerides and, and cholesterol levels, you know, again, another risk factor for uh, cardiovascular disease. So those are the main things that are lifestyle related usually, and uh, they are good markers. We have lots of other markers, but um, those are the, the big ones. And yes, you can have elevations in those and live a perfectly healthy, happy life. It just puts you at an elevated risk for uh, those things I talked about. Um, so what do you have specific diet recommendations for certain people in certain situations? Like if you were actually to, to, to run their, um, do some blood work on them and say, Oh yeah, your triglycerides are high or, uh, your cholesterol sucks or, or your A1C is running a little high or whatever. Do you have specific recommendations you give them or just basically eat less, you know, lose weight and these will improve? Yeah, there, there can be more specific recommendations based on uh, the condition. A lot of times weight loss will improve all of it. So weight loss will improve blood pressure. It will improve blood sugars. It will Im improve triglycerides uh, if, if you are indeed uh, like insulin resistant and that's the reason your triglycerides and, and cholesterol is high. Um, but there are there can be more specific uh, uh, prescriptions. So, for instance, blood pressure can improve with without weight loss with just some dietary pattern changes. So, like a dash like diet. Um, so it's just a lot of fruits and vegetables and lean dairy and and, and whole grains uh, and, and that type of thing. But that usually leads to a little bit of weight loss. I like to do kind of a, a improved dietary pattern along with a, a, a caloric deficit to help them with weight loss and with dietary pattern. That's usually how you um, kill two birds with one stone and, and kind of shotgun approach it. And then for cholesterol, you know, some people can have just elevated cholesterol just from dietary uh, changes. So they can actually change it to a different pattern, lower the cholesterol, and that because Cholesterol itself is actually hard to change with weight loss only, mm. unless it's triglycerides. Um, so, yeah, usually there's a different prescription for that. And then blood sugar, a lot of times weight loss by itself will work. But you can do a lower carbohydrate diet, uh, which can lower your blood sugars regardless of weight loss. Uh, you know, there's a lot of back and forth and controversy on, on that. But in general, that's the, that's the key. Just real quick, can you give us a capsule on, on your practice? Yeah, so uh, I actually switched from clinic only to telemedicine only. So I have patients all across the country. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lifestyle focused, although I'm still uh, I'm not anti-big pharma. I, I, in fact, I have a lot of pride in my pharmacology knowledge because I do think that, you know, obviously people are going to need uh, to augment their lifestyle choices sometimes with pharmaceutical medicines as needed. You know, you can't mm -hmm. just say, no, I'm not using any drugs because I don't natural only. No, people will need them. But um, uh, so I, I heavy focus on lifestyle medicine and then using telemedicine, I'm able to monitor people more proactively as opposed to just, coming back to the clinic in three months and then you miss things and it's more of a retroactive, inefficient type of uh, practice, whereas I try to be more proactive. Uh, and that's kind of my approach. And so it's, 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 uh, it's more of a, we call it a direct primary care where they pay a subscription, $100 a month gets you access. And I don't use insurance, so um, there's not all the headaches with, you know, getting reimbursed and all that type of thing. So it's better for everybody. Uh, as far as I can see. 
Well, it does actually. Uh, I think it helps a lot of people find somebody that uh, maybe understands like what their what their goals are. Particularly like those of us in the in the, in the industry, uh, it's hard to find a doctor that understands um, lifting weights or just fitness in general. It, for whatever reason, it just seems to be the case. It's and it's hard to find if you're in an HMO model. It's hard to find. A uh, really good primary care physician, anyway. So um, being able to actually have that choice. So like, so if you have to prescribe drugs, like, how does that work with somebody's insurance? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, sometimes it makes it really difficult. I mean, I can send in what I think. I mean, not what I think, but based on the current data, is, is probably the best for that patient. And insurance, they will, you know, they will say, nope, you got to go with this alternative. And it's, they're basically practicing the medicine for you. And then you have to go through an appeals process mm. and they can end up denying me anyway, which is interesting. So, um, uh, it, it can be a real hassle, but you know, in general, I, I send in what is the best drug for that person based on the literature and hopefully it gets approved. <laughs> Cool. Makes sense. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed the podcast. If you do, please share it with your friends. It helps us grow a lot, and we really appreciate it. Give us a rating and review. You can find me, Asylum Mike, with 2Ks, Instagram, Twitter. 50% facts on Instagram. Give it a follow for all updates on the show. I am at the Jim McD on all the social media, and we will get you next time.